Vancouver, where the Grey Cup game will be played in 22 days. Can the home team get there? With a win tonight, Dave Ritchie's Lions will post 12 victories for the first time in seven years. Wally Buono's signature has always been winning. His club has a chance to post back-to-back 15-win -back seasons. And then there's Alan Pitt. He broke one CFL record last week. Three more in his sights. The Lions and Stamps promise to end the regular season with guns a-blazing next. Before Doug Flutie, no one had ever won three straight Most Outstanding Player Awards. And now Flutie stands on the verge of another first. No one has ever won four in their career. Flutie is again a finalist, but he wants to return to Vancouver to win a second Grey Cup more than anything. Hopefully we can use this game as a springboard into the playoffs and continue to play some good solid football to gain our confidence going into the playoffs. This year, Darren Flutie emerged from Doug's shadow. He is the Lions' outstanding player with more than 1,800 receiving yards. And he too has Grey Cup vision. There's nothing Flutie and the Lions would like more than to play in the Grey Cup game in their home park in late November. We're going to see two of the top teams in the CFL going head-to-head -head and playing very aggressive football, trying to get ready for the playoffs, and uh, I think you're going to see a lot of points on the board. Tonight, from Vancouver, the Brothers Flutie go head-to-head -head on the CFL Live. Hi everybody, welcome to the CFL Live from Vancouver, I'm Gord Miller. This much we know, the BC Lions will play the Edmonton Eskimos in the first round of the playoffs next week. But where will the game be played? In Edmonton, where winter has definitely arrived? Or under the perfect conditions here at BC Place? If the Lions win tonight and Edmonton loses tomorrow to Las Vegas, BC gets second place and dome field advantage. But a win tonight does something else for the Lions. It forces Edmonton to take the game against Las Vegas very seriously tomorrow and expose its starters to some more knocks and bruises. To talk about the Calgary Stampeders, here are John Wells and Lee Pedersen. Gord, the Calgary Stampeders have been gunning for the Grey Cup since they lost the Western Final of the Edmonton Eskimos about a year ago. And it's a pretty good bet that they're going to be here three weeks from Sunday at BC Place because this team is better in just about every area. Yeah, I think they really are, John. I think what you have to do when you look at Calgary is compare them to where they were a year ago when they finished the season 15-3 and three, and then, of course, lost in the Western Final. But this year's addition of the Calgary Stampeders, especially offensively, is a lot different than it was a year ago. I think you talk about Tony Stewart, the first 1,000-yard rusher they've had since 1986, and don't think this wasn't geared towards the cold weather that's going to be the next uh, in the next few weeks. Alan Pitts wasn't here a year ago. He is now healthy. And, of course, Doug Flutie has broken his league touchdown passing record. So they are a better offensive team. And there are no defensive weaknesses either. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of Canadians in this Calgary Stampeder lineup that are just having superb seasons. Yeah, it's hard to imagine a better defense than they were a year ago, but this too is the case. Uh, this defense is an awesome defense. You look, they're strong down the middle. Greg Knox has played better than anybody ever expected he would with his 10 interceptions. Throw in veteran Stu Laird having a career year with nine sacks, and Kenny Walker has given them the balance with that front four. Hey, yeah, Will Johnson's having a super year, but Walker gives them that balance. So when you compare them to where they were a year ago, this is by far a much tougher for Calgary team. It seems strange, hard to believe. And no one in Canadian football can really find any weaknesses on this Calgary Stampeder team. They have set four CFL records already, and a couple more could fall on the final night of the season. Gord? That's right, John. If the Stampeders, in fact, continue the pace that they've put up this season, as many as eight CFL marks could fall tonight. Four team records and four individual marks. All of this on the night when the Lions will honor Lou Pasaglia. They're soon to be Hall of Fame kicker. The Lions are 40, Louis 40, and they're expecting more than 40,000 fans here tonight. Doug Flutie returns to the place where he made his CFL debut. He's gunning, and so are the Lions, who still have hopes for second place. Guys? Right guard, a night to salute Lou at BC Place for 19 wonderful seasons in Canadian football. 
What will be the difference on the final game of the regular season here tonight, Lee? Well, John, I think the difference in this game, as has been so many times when you play Calgary this year, simply Alan Pitts. He's had a phenomenal season, 11 100-yard games. One more will beat the record. He shares with Terry Greer now 33 100-yard games in his total career, and usually he dominates any game he plays in. And I think, obviously, the BC Lions will have to be very aware of where he lines up on the field tonight, and he could definitely be the difference in this game. Calgary Stampeders, 14 wins and three losses on the season against the BC Lions with 11 wins, five losses, and one tie. Dave Ritchie in his second year as head coach of the Lions and Wally Buono in his fifth season as head man in Calgary. Buono's numbers are simply amazing. He has done a terrific job with the Stampeders since taking over and all season long once more. You know what I like about the job that Wally Buono has done is, is the level of consistency that his teams always seem to play. I mean, 15-3 and three last year, they have a chance to equal that mark with a win tonight. But, you know, an 18-game season, that's an awfully long season. And to keep your team at that consistent a level, I think, uh, is truly a feather in his cap. And Dave Ritchie hitting on 60%. As a head coach in Canadian football, a winner last week, 45 to 7 over Las Vegas, to get the Lions in position to finish in second spots in the CFL's Western Division. But the Lions have to win tonight and hope that the Edmonton Eskimos lose tomorrow. And the man of the hour, the man of 19 seasons in Canadian football in British Columbia, Louis Pasaglia, has this football evening underway. Marvin Coleman. Gets out across the 30, and a crowd gives a tumultuous welcome to the BC Lions. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Speedy Auto Glass. Don't take a chance. Take your Auto Glass repairs to Speedy. Marvin Coleman heads to the sidelines, and that means Doug Flutie heads to center stage to get things underway for the Stampeders. 46 touchdown passes on the season that is a new Canadian Football League record it is simply amazing yeah and as you look at those numbers John the 18 interceptions to 46 touchdown passes is the best ratio that he has ever had in his career Flutie beginning from the shotgun with a jump pass and Sean Daniels couldn't bring it down number 35 here's the way they'll line up with Flutie in the backfield it is Sean Daniels 35 and the wonderful Tony Stewart number 21 a receiving core that most coaches would kill for. Wiggins, Pitts, Danielson, and Pee Wee Smith. And Dave Sapungis in the wings. He'll see some action tonight. And an offensive line that does just a terrific job blocking, uh, protecting for Doug Flutie. Well, you look at Rocco Romano. He's made the switch from left guard to right guard. He is the Western nominee for offensive linemen. Uh, this group has done a super job all year long. Second and ten, Stampeders. Here comes the charge. Flutie releases. Pitts was the intended target, and Pitts couldn't come up with that one. Coverage supplied by Charles Gordon, who's having a terrific season, according to his head coach, Dave Ritchie. Flutie a little angry that he missed that one. Thought he had an opportunity. Here's Tony Martino. Another sensational season. You see the average at 44.1. Not and, bad at all. Yeah, and you take that to the next level, John. He leads the league in net punting yardage at 36.9. That means, you know, what he gets and what the teams return against him. That is number one in the league. So, you know, his cover guys always do a good job for him. Martino has it down. It! And bouncing by Spencer McLennan, who has chased back to the 15. No return of any consequence there 59 yard punt will be added to Martino's average Danny McManus McManus will begin at quarterback for the BC Lions tonight he hasn't seen a lot of action but he had a great week last week six touchdowns seven interceptions on the year he rounded into form well last week yes he did he had a great game against Las Vegas in their convincing win and uh, you know Kent Austin chatted with Kent before the game he says he will be ready for the playoff game next week but I would have to think if Danny McManus performs well tonight, he should probably get the start as well next week. I think you're absolutely right. McManus has Darren Flutie. And Flutie breaks one tackle. He's to the outside. That'll be a big first down for the Lions. It began at the 19-yard line, and Flutie gets them out of trouble in a hurry. McManus will have Corey Philpott and Sean Millington to run the football. 
And he, too, has a wonderful core of receivers with Ray Alexander and Matt Clark outside, Trevathan and Darren Flutie inside. And his offensive line, they've moved around a few positions. Denny Kronopoulos back in the lineup tonight. Rob Smith moves from tackle to guard. Through all of that, they've still done a great job protecting their quarterbacks. 13-yard gain, and this is Phil Potts. More than halfway to a first down for the BC Lions. Corey Philpotts averaging 7.4 yards a carry for the Stampeders defensively. We talked about no weaknesses anywhere. Johnson Lairds is a Kovic walker up front. The linebacking core solid as well. Finley had a great week, and Marvin Pope is always solid. So is Johnson. Yeah, and a secondary that simply has no weaknesses. Greg Knox, we told you, 10 interceptions, uh, only his second year starting in the middle. And how about Doug Kraft, his first full year starting on the corner, chipped in with six himself. On second and four, it's Phil Pot again. And he should be pretty close to the first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. Corey Philpott, 17 carries for 150 yards and three touchdowns last week. It's been a funny year for Philpott, though, John. Only 14 games he's played. He's over 1,400 yards. There you see his numbers. But he has been sat down twice now for what... Dave Ritchie feels is uh, not a terrific attitude in practice and in some games so he is still a bit of a mystery a good week last week we'll see if he can do it again uh, two weeks in a row McManus on first down and it's Mike Trevathan two defenders collide and Trevathan heads to the end zone he'll get there Trevathan has his 11th touchdown reception of the season. And it's a nice roll away. It's the throwback to Trevathan. He just splits the seam, and the Calvary Staff Peters collide with each other, and he's off and running. And you talk about a guy with a good touchdown to reception ratio. That's his 11th touchdown on only 54 catches. Boy, does he get the job done. 67 yard touchdown for Mike Trevathan as the Lions are in front. And they call on Lou Pasaglia to make it 7-0. Lions began that drive way back at the 19-yard line. Pasaglia finished it off. Trevathan has the touchdown. And the Lions have a 7-0 lead. Kenton Leonard, the coverage here. Watch Trevathan. He swims underneath. And then he gets it right in there. Marvin Pope can't make the play from the middle linebacker. You'll watch Greg Knox comes in, and they all collide. And who's left free? But Mike Trevathan, he outruns A.J. Johnson into the end zone. And what a terrific start for Danny McManus in his offense. Trevathan, his 11th touchdown of the season. 67-yard touchdown, and that finished off a rather nifty drive for the British Columbia Lions. Four plays to cover 91 yards in a time of 209 and Trevathan's 11th touchdown of the season has the Lions in front 7-0. And for Danny McManus, he now squares his interception to touchdown ratio at 50-50 with seven interceptions. Now his seventh touchdown pass and well, you know, for the BC Lions, they'd love to set a precedent going into the playoffs. They may, in fact, meet Calgary at the Western Final and uh, they'd like to establish themselves tonight in this game. Stampeders won big in July over the BC Lions. Wiggins out across the 35, and Flutie heads back out onto the field. Doug Flutie, 20 of 30, 328 yards in a victory last week, four touchdowns. He has been sacked 19 times this season and thrown 46 touchdowns. Dan Peters begin this drive out across the 35 at the 38. Tony Stewart. And there's a little room on the left side. Stewart stopped after a three-yard gain. Up front for the Lions. Doug Peterson, Dave Chaters, and Andrew Stewart. They're missing Glenn Scrivener. That's one of the key problems for the Lions. The linebacking core has been solid most of the year with Snipes, Chapman, Henry Newby, a solid newcomer, and Virgil Robertson. And major change in the secondary tonight. Barry Wilburn will play for Les Brown, the league's leading interceptor, who is out with a hamstring injury. Flutie on second and eight. Ah, oh, Sopungis makes the catch. Dave Sapunjas back in action for the first time. He's missed six weeks. 
with a shoulder problem and appeared to be shaken up making his first catch since getting back into the lineup. Well, he took a real shot from, I believe, number 26, Charles Gordon. You'll see him come across the middle into your picture here. And good to see Sapunjis back, but it's actually 23, Tony Collier, who will come in in the nickelback situations, and he will have Sapunjis a lot tonight. Sapunjis did have enough for the first down. And so the Lions are near the 50 with Flutie in the shotgun. Big charge was on. He gets it to Stewart coming out of the backfield. Stewart got away from one, and then he's thrown back for a bit of a loss there as Jefferson, James Jefferson, came up. Yeah, and he got some real help from Tyrone Chapman, number 47, the inside linebacker. The Calgary Stampeders really try and stretch a defense, and the inside linebackers can really take a beating, but watch how quickly 47 Chapman got out there to get in on the play. He makes the initial hit. Jefferson cleans up, but... Boy, the inside guys, Henry Newby and Chapman, are really going to have their hands full. It's second and long again. Second down and eight for the Stampeders. Here comes the charge from the Lions. Flutie unloads, and he's on target. Wiggins comes down with the ball near the 31. Wiggins got in behind Tom Europe. And Brian Wiggins, who's sitting on 815 yards, has an outside shot at being a 1,000-yard receiver if he has a spectacular night. But he sneaks in behind the coverage. It's a, what they call a two-deep uh, cover two with a man free over the top. And the linebacker, Robertson, just could not stay with him. Was Wiggins is 28 yards closer to 1,000 now, thanks to that reception, setting the Lions up just outside the beast, or the Stampeders up just outside the Lion 30-yard line. Shotgun Flutie near side, and Pitts was the intended receiver. Gordon was covering number 26, Charles Gordon. Got the best of Alan Pitts. You know, I talked to Doug Flutie before the game. Would you try and get Alan Pitts that yardage uh, record early? He's only 45 yards away from Terry Pearson. Doug Flutie kind of said, well, no, not really, but uh, you know if we get into the fourth quarter and he doesn't have it, we're going to make sure he gets it tonight. Second and ten. Here comes the charge. Flutie releasing for Wiggins. Wiggins cuts across and back into the middle. He's near the 21-yard line. And looks to be about a yard shy. They'll measure this. Wiggins and Pee Wee Smith, the outside receivers for the Stampeders. Inside, Allen Pitts and Danielson. Just shy. Less than a yard to go, and the Stampeders will go gunning for this one. Into the game, Stewart, along with Sean Daniels. Sapunjas heads to the sidelines along with Danielson. Third, less than a yard to go at the 22. Stampeders are down by a touchdown to the BC Lions. And it's early in this ball game at BC Place. Flutie keeps himself and has plenty for the first down. Well, when Flutie splits everybody out, it's a pretty good indication that he's going to carry the ball. And uh, if you're a middle linebacker, one of the two inside guys like Newby and Chapman, I'd be trying to go helmet to helmet with Flutie and uh, test him out on that quarterback sneak. So far, a pretty decent drive for the Stampeders. Just inside the BC 20 now. From the 19, it's first and 10. Tony Stewart, nice hole for Stewart as he gets down to about the 10-yard line. Eight yards for Stewart. He averages 5.5 a carry so far in 94. Well, one of the things the Stampeders have improved so much is their blocking schemes up front. Doug Davies, and then watch the hole for Tony Stewart right there. I mean, you talk about a team that's really improved its rushing abilities. They're about six, 700 yards ahead of last year's pace with still a game remaining. And don't think that they didn't gear that for a cold weather game in a few weeks with maybe the guys up the road a little ways. This is Stewart, and he stopped. But he may have enough for the...
for the first down. He needed a yard. We'll see where they spot the ball. Not much room inside for Stewart, as you see Huffnagel talking it over with Buono right, and Sapungis on the sidelines. Close enough to measure. Superb crowd on hand here for the final game of the regular season. A night to salute Lou Pasaglia for 19 years of excellence in a BC Lion uniform. It's not necessarily Lou's retirement party, but it's a nice thought on behalf of the Lions, and we'll show you some of the festivities at halftime here at the stadium at BC Place. This will be the 10th play of the Stampeder Drive. Third down, less than a yard to go. Woody himself again. And that'll be another Stampeder first down. First and goal to go from around the nine. Stampeders were big time winners over the BC Lions back on July 29th. Stampeders set a team scoring record that night, scoring 62 points. The BC Lions just 21. Lions with a little something to prove here tonight to get back at the Stampeders and Show the Stampeders, they're ready for the playoffs. Flutie end zone, touchdown. Will Moore, number 82. And that looked easy as Moore was wide open in the corner. Well, John, you know, in practice, I've sat down in the end zone and watched their passing game inside the 20-yard line, and things come at you so quickly that defenses can make mistakes. They turn Will Moore, number 82, absolutely loose. He was the third receiver in. He just swung out to the sideline. Somebody made a mistake, and he was wide open. And that's his 11th touchdown on only 42 receptions. So, boy, there's some guys in this game that really have some super production. We talked about Trevathan with his 11th. Will Moore now with his 11th, and uh, it's a pretty good first quarter. It's all even at 7 on Will Moore's 11th touchdown of the season to match Mike Trevathan's 11th touchdown a little earlier. Solid scoring drive for the Stampeders. 11 plays, 72 yards in a time of 6.39. And Flutie finished it off on the touchdown toss. Here we are on the sidelines with a familiar face to Vancouver sports fans. Larry Walker, two questions quickly. When are you coming back and where are you going to play when you do? Well, I don't know when we're coming back. It's all up in the air for all of us. So we're just hanging tough to see what's going to happen. And uh, as far as right now, I'm still in Montreal Expo, and it's going to stay like that until something changes. Your first CFL game, you must have played some football. You're a pretty big guy. No, I never did. Uh, well, I'm pretty field level. Respect. Larry, right, thanks for talking to us. Enjoy the game. All right, thanks, Gord. Ready to return for the BC Lions. Phil Pond gets up near the 30-yard line. Stopped there by Blair Zur for one. And number 44, Raymond Biggs. Danny McManus engineered a rather impressive drive the last time he got his hands on the ball. Last week, got on 26 of 36 for a couple of touchdowns. McManus connecting with Mike Trevathan for a 67-yard touchdown and a four-play 91-yard drive. That made it 7-0 BC, and Doug Flutie answered that with a solid drive of his own. 7-7 as it stands. Ryan Hansen, the injured BC Lion, he's up and at him and headed to the BC bench. John, when you and I looked at this game way back uh, at the beginning of the season, we thought it might uh, be a showdown for first place in the West. Uh, hasn't materialized that way, but uh, what a great finish to our season. And, for the BC Lions, they would love to put the pressure on Edmonton, who plays Vegas tomorrow, to, to have to win to host the home field semifinal. McManus under the cover. He has Flutie short of the first down, but Flutie hangs on as he's dropped by Kenton Leonard, number 30. What a season Darren Flutie has had, averaging 15.9 yards per reception. Again last week, solid production. Eight receptions, 127 yards, and those are the season totals including eight touchdowns. Yeah, that catch, uh, he has now broken the club record that was formerly held by Ray Alexander of 104, so he has put himself all alone in the BC Lion record books. 
Eight yard gain, this is second and two, and there's no running room this time. Sealed up rather quickly by the BC defense. Izakovic is in there, and Sean Millington never got on track. The game that could matter to the BC Lions tomorrow is Las Vegas at Edmonton. Leaf was talking about that. If the Eskimos win that, the Lions will be at Commonwealth for the playoff game. Saskatchewan at Hamilton, Tiger Cats. Need a winner at tie there to grab the final playoff spot of the CFL East and Toronto and Winnipeg. Well, that's looking like a showdown. Well, it will be a showdown, or at least a preview of uh, game one of the playoffs in the East. High kick by Pasaglia. Down near the 25. Coleman. Stopped after a return of about six yards. Timeout on the field. 47-yard punt, a 10-yard return. It's all even at 7-7, but Doug Flutie gets the ball back. This is CFL Live. Great to see a fine crowd on hand here at BC Place. Part of it to honor Lou Pasagli, a part of it to uh, welcome Doug Flutie back to Vancouver and watch him in action. But a solid showing nonetheless by the fans of BC Place. First and 10, Stampeders, all even at seven. Stampeders beginning at the 36. Flutie, far side, he's on target, and that'll be good for a first down. Wiggins makes the catch. And James Jefferson made the tackle after an 11-yard pickup. You no, know, John, I talked about Brian Wiggins with an opportunity to maybe get to 1,000 yards, and uh, he, he's got the ability. Last year, he had 230 yards in a game against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So, I mean, it's possible he could have a big night with everybody paying so much attention to, to Alan Pitts and the record he's trying to establish. Stampeders out at the 47 on first down. Little play action for Flutie, and he looked back into the middle, almost picked up. Gordon had the opportunity, number 26, Charles Gordon. And it was just a little too low. <laughs> and and I don't know what Flutie was saying about himself there, pointing back towards his head. Well, he's saying it's his fault, but that's probably the toughest throw that Doug Flutie can try and complete. Uh, rolling to his left and then throwing way back across the field. And Boy, this ball has to be thrown on a rope because Charlie Gordon is making such a good break on it, but for Doug Flutie, I mean, that really tests his arm strength. Shotgun again on second and ten. Flutie couldn't get it away. He threw the ball. Flutie claims he was looking to Danielson, but there's a marker down. Yeah, I really think uh, they can't call him for intentionally grounding there. Danielson was within five yards of the football. And, you know, I thought it was pretty heads-up play by Flutie to avoid the sack by doing that. I think Jake Ireland's going to overrule it. There was an eligible receiver in the area. There's no infraction. Incomplete pass. Yeah, you know, you have, you have to admire Jake Ireland for doing that. Uh, I mean, sure, he didn't see the guy, but once he uh, took a look, consulted with the other officials, uh, he knew that there was no flag warranted on that play you see Doug Flutie does a smart thing heavy pressure here well he doesn't see too much pressure but this time the blitz coming Virgil Robertson and there you see Robertson coming in and Flutie does the smart thing to just say hey Danielson's close enough I'm gonna unload it here's Martino's kick it is not high coming down to Spencer McLennan and he stopped in his tracks near the 30 yard line 35-yard punts by Martino, just one yard of the return. And the BC Lions take over. Danny McManus at the controls. McManus engineered a rather impressive drive the first time he got his hands on the football. And tries to get a little something going now. Three of three for 88 yards. One touchdown for McManus. That was a 67-yarder to Mike Trevathan. To the near side, it's Matt Clark, number 85, Alexander, flanked to the far side of the field. First and 10 Lions, beginning at the 30. McManus with time over the middle. He has Clark, and a big first down. BC out near midfield. Matt Clark, number 85. 24 yards for Clark. 
Yeah, Matt Clark's made a nice adjustment out to the wide receiver. Here you'll see him here. And Junior Thurman just gives him a little much too, uh, too much room to the inside, but uh, I think showing a little too much respect for Matt Clark. But that's a tough adjustment to play slot and then move back out to wide receiver. So much uh, more difficult, I think, doing it in reverse. BC lands out at the 54-yard line for the first down. It's 7-7 with a minute one remaining in the opening quarter. Play action, McManus. And he tried to find Millington and hurried that just a little bit. And that's the first miss for McManus. And he didn't miss by all that much. No, he didn't. And I think this is a great scheme for BC. I mean, they've established this year that they can run the ball and run it well. So the play action becomes so much more effective in their offensive weaponry. And here he should have had Millington out in the flat. Danny McManus just simply overthrew him. But I mean, I think that's a great scheme for them. Yeah, he had the right call, just uh, overthrew Millington. Second and 10. BC at the Lion 54. McManus had Alexander. And I'm not sure if Junior Thurman got a hand in there or not, but Alexander couldn't hang on. Coverage by Junior Thurman. He looked to maybe slide a hand in there. Yeah, I think Junior said, hey, uh, Clark, I gave him far too much room. The next time they come my way, I'm going to close in a little bit tighter. He was all over Ray Alexander, who once again for the fifth time in his career has had a 1,000-yard season. Uh, pretty nice numbers for Ray Alexander. Lost his uh, club record in receptions to Darren Flutie this year, but I think uh, as a team guy, he'd be the one cheering the most for his buddy. Lou Pasaglia. First punt, 47 yards. Pasaglia standing back at the 40. Still not 100%. And he rolled this one past Coleman, number 17. Marvin Coleman had no play, so Pasaglia gets the job done with a 36-yard punt, no return. Stan Peters will begin back at the 20-yard line. Doug Flutie, 6 of 11 for 68, and the one touchdown toss to Will Moore. Dave Sapunch is in the lineup here on first down. They're going to work him into the lineup uh, just rather gently tonight, use him as the fifth receiver in their five-pack scheme of things. He was not listed as a starter in the Stampeder depth chart. Shotgun Flutie. Under the cover, and there's Sapunjus making the catch for a first down out of the 35. Dave Sapunjus, second catch of the opening quarter, and that wraps up quarter number one. It's all even at BC Play Stadium for the Stampeders and the BC Lions. A touchdown. Game as we get set to get the second quarter underway with the Lions and the Stampeders all even at seven. Solid crowd on hand tonight to. Salute Lou Pasaglia for his 19 years in Canadian football. We'll show you part of that ceremony at halftime. You know who I saw here before the game that's uh, among the group here to pay tribute to Lou was Don Sweet, the former great oh, kicker yeah. of the uh, Montreal Alouettes. Don, uh, I said, how are you doing? He said, I'm here to pay tribute to one of my fellow kickers, Lou Pasaglia, tonight. I thought it was nice that he would make the effort to be here. It's a wonderful career that Lou Pasaglia has put together. Graduating from Simon Fraser University, he is the all-time all-pro point scoring leader. And he has a list of records just too numerous to mention. Stampeders on first down. Flutie on play action, and he's nailed. Sacked for the 20th time, and Angelo Snipes is there to celebrate his 10th sack of the season. Loss of six yards as Snipes got through to get to Doug Flutie. The sack leader for the BC Lion defense this year. They haven't had nearly as many as they had a year ago, but the stunt to the inside, and Angelo Snipes works it to perfection, picks up his 10th sack of the season. That has not happened to Doug Flutie very often this year. Only 20 times as mentioned. This is second and 16. Flutie is way back and look deep. Intended that for Wiggins, and Wiggins drew double coverage over there as Jackson was in the area, and so was Tony Collier. Will he not pleased about the turn of events out there? Numbers from the 
first quarter courtesy of Subway. Well, the Stampeders in front in first downs. And the BC Lions in front in net yards, but half of the Lions yards really coming on a touchdown toss to Mike Trevathan of 67 yards. Yeah, they really had uh, only the one good drive, uh, the four play drive that they scored on. Unusual that first quarter. Uh, pretty low total in penalties. BC Lions leading the league. Uh, Spencer McLennan came up and got his hands on the ball. It looks like a BC Lion might have recovered it after McLennan lost the ball down there. 35 yard punt by Martino. And it's Enos Jackson coming up with the ball. On the exchange, the Lions come up with pretty good field position. You a fight fan, uh, yeah. John? How about George Foreman? What happened? He's the oldest heavyweight champion in the world. Won that fight tonight in Las Vegas. Over Moore? Knocked, knocked him out. Oh, my God. Can you believe that? There's still hope How for you at your age. You know. <laughs> How old is he now? 100. 46 years old is George Foreman. Corey Philpott has a couple for the BC Lions. It's a truly amazing boxing story. Looks like about a four yard gain. Second and six coming up for the Lions. Second quarter just nicely underway. Ray Alexander to the near side. Matt Clark far side of the field. McManus looks out and Flutie the intended receiver. Alondra Johnson coming up to cover number 51. Solid season again for Johnson. Seven knockdowns. That's number eight. Yeah, what the Calgary defense has done more and more this year is try and fool teams. Here's Gerald Vaughn. You think he's in coverage? Uh-uh. He's coming on the halfback blitz, and Calgary used to be a real zone conservative defense. They have thrown more looks at teams this year, and that's one of the reasons why I think they're playing better D. Uh, Laundra Johnson got over to knock the ball away, but, boy, so many different looks. They give offenses all throughout the league so many more things to think about now. Enter Lou Pasaglia once more. He's standing at his 40-yard line. Solid kick by Pasaglia. Right back to the five-yard line, and that's where Pee Wee Smith is. Did the ball come loose? It looks like it might have. Sean Foody, number 22, looks to be celebrating down there. And Lou Pasaglia's deep kick sets it up. Foody recovers the ball. BC Lions have a chance to take the lead. This is CFL Live from Vancouver. Lupa Saglia unloaded a 52-yard punt and solid coverage work by the BC Lions. Well, Pee Wee Smith handles it cleanly. You'll see the tackle by Ricardo Washington, but I honestly believe Pee Wee Smith just coughed it up himself and as he went down, the ball came loose and shot Booty there with the recovery and an enormous uh, break for the BC Lions. There's Flutie. Booty's telling everybody how he did it. And look what he did. He has the ball for the BC Lions set up at the four-yard line. Pee Wee Smith on the sidelines, a little upset with himself for obvious reasons. Well, he doesn't make too many mistakes, uh, Demetrius, but uh, he made one there, and it could cost his team some points. First and ten for the Lions at the Stampeder four-yard line. Danny McManus at the controls for BC. First and goal to go at the four. The pitch to Philpott. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Play was a little slow in developing. Shrekos is a Kovic in on the tackle. So is Stu Laird. Yeah, what you want to do in that defense when you're backed up at your own goal line is get penetration. Watch Marvin Pope. He comes up now. He doesn't make the tackle, but he really messes the play up right at the beginning. Almost has Phil Pot in the backfield, and Will Johnson comes in and Shrekos is a Kovic. But when you get that initial pressure or penetration, I mean, you just destroy the blocking schemes right off the bat. They'll call it a gain of one, making it second and goal to go Lions at the three. McManus looks to put it up, and on the line, it's 
Mike Trevathan, two touchdowns for 77. First one was over 60 yards. This is just a little chip shot from three yards out. Now down at goal line defense, sometimes you try and bump the coverage down there with three receivers to the wide side. The Calgary Stampeders made one of their rare mistakes. Trevathan wide open. And give Danny McManus and that offense credit. They take advantage of the turnover for the touchdown. Lions in front again by a touchdown. It's 14 to 7 at BC Place. Good chop block protection up front from his offensive line, and the, probably the easiest touchdown pass that McManus has thrown all season long. <laughs> his eighth, uh, you see Trevathan wide open. But boy, is it, if you're if you consider yourself a good offense, you're a good offense if you take advantage of other teams' mistakes. The BC Lions did it in a hurry to the Stampeders. Trevathan just cradled that one for his 12th of the season. I'm doing some quick math here, and I do believe that's 12 touchdowns on 55 receptions. And that's uh, less than every five catches he scores a big one. That's pretty good uh, ratio. Mike Trevathan started the game a little shy of the 1,000-yard mark. And he's closing in on that on two receptions for 70 yards. He's about 15 shy of 1,000 now. Sam Peters set to return. This is Wiggins. Turns into a crowd, and he's out across the 35 and nailed about the 37. So Flutie gets set to go to work. Engineered a rather impressive touchdown march a little earlier. Brian Ford, uh, reserve linebacker with the BC Lions, probably covers kicks as well as anybody in the league. And once again, he gets in on the action here. And Brian Wiggins makes the hit. He's a little ticked off that he's not getting more playing time as a starting linebacker. Led the team in tackles in the fourth quarter with five last week against Vegas. And he makes no bones about it. He's ticked off. He doesn't have more starting time. Floody on first down. Stewart has stopped well short of a first down. You can see number 74, Dave Chaters in there, as well as Doug Peterson, number 92. The hole simply didn't open up that time. The gain is two. Nevertheless, Tony Stewart's had a phenomenal year to go over 1,000 yards. Uh, the, the last piece of the puzzle, I really believe, to really make this Calgary offense complete. First damn Peter Rusher over a thousand since 1986. Here's Flutie on second and eight. This will be a first down as Dave Sapungis made the catch. Slowed by Collier and James Jefferson. 13 for Sapungis. You know, John, we talk about Calgary and uh, do they have better balance as an offense this year? Well, I don't think there's any question. You look at their yards passing. Yeah, they had more a year ago, but those numbers for 1994, of course, are only through 17 games. But look at the rushing difference, almost 600 more yards with a game, uh, tonight's game to play. So total offense, they're ahead, and they're ahead with better balance. And that makes Wally Buono breathe a little easier at this time of the year with that balance. Good play action fake by Flutie. And now he has Stewart coming out of the backfield. This will be another first down for the Calgary Stampeders as Stewart is finally wrestled down by Henry Newby. He's the outstanding BC rookie in 1994. 15 yards the game. John and Leif, the concern on the Calgary sideline for the coaches and what they've expressed to the players on the Calgary offense is that they're seeing the exact kind of defense they'd likely see from Saskatchewan next week and Edmonton perhaps a week later. And right now, Calgary's having difficulty protecting Doug Flutie, and that's something they're looking at upstairs. Stampeders set up at the 41. Sean Daniels, number 35, has four yards. No, John, we talk about Calgary and how they've improved their offense this year. You talk about the BC Lions. Have they improved their defense? And the most noteworthy aspect of that is yards passing against. Last year, everybody threw against them over 6,000 yards against that secondary. This year, almost a 2,000-yard improvement. I mean, that is a Dave Ritchie influence. He's a defensive genius. 
and don't think he hasn't made his mark with his team in that department. Bloody on second and six. Has time, has a target. It'll be a first down for the Stampeders inside the 25. First catch for Alan Pitts tonight as he closes in on that single season receiving record. Yeah, an interesting matchup with Enos Jackson. Jackson, a very physical inside halfback. You see him, Tom, try to get the jam on Pitts. He got the jam, but then he lost the separation. And pretty easy reception for Alan Pitts. And, of course, we'll follow you 45 yards at the beginning of this game away from the total yardage uh, record by Terry Greer. He's 30 shy now after a 15-yard gain there. This is Flutie. End zone toss. Alan Pitts couldn't bring it down. What a great defensive play. Enos Jackson got one hand up. It looked like it was in Alan Pitts's arms, and Flutie didn't miss by much. Solid defensive work by 29. Watch how Enos Jackson stays underneath on the inside hip, and at the last second, it gets a left hand up in the air. Well, you cannot do it any better than that. You know, Enos Jackson is the kind of guy that will come up and challenge those receivers, and, uh, well, I think he really relishes the opportunity to play against Alan Pitts tonight. And, try and shut him down as best he can. Now second and 10, Stampeders at the BC 22. Again, Flutie shotgun. Again, the end zone look, and a marker is down. Charles Gordon hates the call for obvious reasons. Well, you know, Charles Gordon is always going to be around the football. Here he is at the top, and you got uh, Will Moore running the pattern on him down here. Have a look. See if he makes contact with the ball before the ball gets there. I don't know. This is a pretty close call. Ball's in the air. There comes Gordon through him. I don't think there's any question he made contact early. It was so early, in fact, that he thought, well, hey, I got away from him enough to not warrant a flag, but he gets flagged for it. And you notice Charles Gordon ran right by the official and didn't talk to him. The BC defenders signed a contract with Coach Dave Ritchie this week. BC, the most penalized team in the league. The players promised the head coach they would no longer talk back to the officials. Charles Gordon was outraged by the call, but ran right by the man who called it. It'll go for a 20-yard gain for the Stampeders and set Calgary up first and goal to go at the BC 2. Stewart. Second efforts. They're calling it a touchdown on the far side as Stewart slipped in for his 14th rushing touchdown of the season. A couple of BC Lion defenders thought they had him stops. But Stewart is in, so we're almost even again. Have a good look at Sean Daniels, 35, the lead block, and he certainly doesn't get in by much. Tyrone Chapman meets him in the hole, but all you have to do is break the plane of the goal line. And oh, I'm not, well, what do you think? Did tough, he make it? Well, it's <laughs> tough to see from that angle. Obviously, yeah. they pushed him back, but uh, certainly the official on the goal line had a clear view to see if he broke that imaginary plane, and obviously, in his opinion, he did. He needed extra effort, second effort to get there. McLaughlin has this thing even again. Two touchdowns each as the BC Lions and the Calgary Stampeders get together on the final day of the 1994 regular season. All even again at the stadium at BC Place, Calgary and British Columbia tied at 14. Now, one of the reasons they made a trade to get Sean Daniels the fullback is because he's such a good blocker. Watch the block on Charlie Gordon right here, and watch Tyrone Chapman. He will come and meet Tony Stewart right in the hole. And you be the judge. I know it's tough from this angle to tell whether he got in, but remember, all he has to do is break the plane of the goal line. They met him in midair, and you know, the official right on the goal line has a great look at it. I, I'm sure he was in. Eight plays to cover 72 yards in a time of 429. Stewart on a two-yard rush on first and goal to go at the two-yard line. Spencer McLennan. Calls for it at the 15. In the middle, and he's out near the 30-yard line. Nice little 15-yard return. Leading the tacklers that time, number eight, Greg Knox. So Danny McManus tries to answer the touchdown engineered by Doug Flutie. 
McManus has two touchdowns tonight, both to Mike Trevathan. Yeah, I think he's had a great first half so far, and uh, this game has materialized pretty much the way we thought it would. It's a pretty good offense for both sides. You're talking about Kent Austin telling you that he thought he would be back for the playoff game against the Eskimos next week. McManus hopes to get the start. What a pass there to Trevathan. And he is down to the 40-yard line. Great pass by Danny McManus on a rope to Mike Trevathan. And he's over 1,000 yards receiving as a result of his activity tonight. Yeah, it's good to play action. What you do is freeze the linebackers enough that when you go down the seam and you catch a team in his own defense, as Calgary is in, you have lots of room to hit that seam. And Mike Trevathan having himself a whale of a first half. But once again, the solid play action that Danny McManus is using is opening up a lot of room for his receivers. 40-yard game, and the Lions are set up. It's Phil Pot stumbling as he came out of the backfield, and he falls forward for a couple. Gervathan over a thousand yards on this season. So that's three BC receivers over a thousand. Three for 110 tonight and two touchdowns. Well, you know, what happens is, you know, you have a Darren Flutie that's having a phenomenal year, but you get the balance on the other side, and it's really tough for a defense to try and overplay to Darren Flutie's side when Trevathan is that productive. Eight of two, this is second and eight for the Lions. It's all even at 14. McManus stands in, and Flutie makes the catch. Big first down, B.C. Darren Flutie, he's having a solid night, too. Great numbers for Danny McManus. Hey, has this become a slot back offense or what? I think it all started with uh, Kent Austin, of course, coming over, being known as a slot back kind of quarterback. And this is uh, certainly the way Danny Bear or Danny McManus rather is operating this offense. Trevathan and Darren Flutie getting a lot of work. Nice night cooking for McManus, seven of ten for 164 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He's first and ten here as he rares back to throw. Trevathan turned the wrong way. He slipped in behind the cover of Kent and Leonard. Number 77, Mike Trevathan. But Kent Leonard's being, uh, trying to be about as physical as I've seen him play all season long. Uh, the receivers get about eight yards downfield. He's trying to put the jam on them to bump them off their pass patterns. It's okay if you get a good piece. You better not miss, though. Lou Pasaglia warming up on the sideline. Stan Peters have a sixth defensive back in there for second and ten for the Lions at the 28. McManus standing in, and there was lots of traffic in the area. Bill Pot was down there. And so is Alexander. John, it's the favorite play of the BC Lions. What they do is try and get Philpott out here and up the sidelines. The linebacker has to come out, but they all just get bunched up and collide together. This is the play they try and set up, and it's the home run play. But watch this. Johnson, Alondra Johnson, everybody, they collide together, and there's no way they could complete it. But that's the wheel route to the running back, Corey Philpott, that they feel they can hit the home run on. Lou Pasagli is still not 100%. But he is on target, kicking at about 85% efficiency as far as his leg is concerned. The Pasagli is one for one tonight. And the BC Lions have the lead once more. Have so far, Dave Ritchie's BC Lions in front of the Calgary Stampeders, 17 to 14. 340 to go until halftime. Well, you'd have to think that they desperately would love to host the Western semifinal here in the nice confines of BC Place, where Doug Flutie loves to play. And you talk about the Stampeders, they, they were talking about this game tonight, a, a meaningless game. But, you know, they're thinking, hey, we're going to be in the Grey Cup. I mean, they have that kind of confidence, obviously. So tonight, they're just getting used to the surroundings again, the lighting, because it is a little different in here, and hoping that they will be back in a few weeks' time uh, playing here for a Grey Cup championship. Basaglia's kickoff. Down to Wiggins. Brian Wiggins cuts back to the near side, and he's stopped near the 31-yard line. 
In the middle of things down there, Ricardo Washington, number 45, and here comes Doug Flutie once more. At halftime, the Lou Pasaglia tribute, a sports break in CFL Live's halftime reports, plus the story of the half. Trevathan has been a big part of the BC story so far. Yeah, he sure has. A couple touchdown receptions. Wiggins to the near side for a Stampeder first down. That's Pee Wee Smith. Banked out of the picture to the far side of the field. Flutie shotgun, and it opens up. Doug Flutie will have a first down, sliding safely at the 42. Tony Collier moving up from his halfback spot to slow Flutie down and hold him to a 10-yard gain. And one thing that happens with Doug Flutie, you spread six receivers out across the field, and this is what's going to happen is you've got six receivers out. Look at this opening right in here, and boy, that's what he sees too. He's got to take advantage of that kind of opportunity, and he does, and you know, he picks up some pretty solid yardage on first down, but once again, it's the formation that creates this opportunity, spreading everybody up. There's nobody left defensively in the middle of the field. Stampeders will be first and ten when we return to the stadium at BC Place. They're having a good time at the stadium at BC Place tonight. The wave is just underway. Underneath our broadcast location as the BC Lions lead the Calgary Stampeders 17 to 14, but it's Calgary first down and Flutie at the controls. The Stampeder 40. Flutie with time. Pumps once and can't get it to Allen Pitts. Moving in to cover Tyrone Chapman. And Flutie and Pitts have not quite clicked. Well, they had a good opportunity here. And what Doug Flutie's doing is he throws it into the hole, hoping Pitts will get there in time. And this time, uh, I think the hit coming from the middle from Henry Newby slowed Allen Pitts down just a touch. Second and ten, Stan Peters. Flutie with time again this time. He has Will Moore, and Moore will have a first down. Twelve yards for Moore. Allen Pitts just one reception for 15 yards so far in the first half. And you look at this receiving core, I mean, with the balance, Will Moore and Wiggins on one side, you get Pitts, Pee Wee Smith, Sapunjas and the other. I mean, who do you pay extra attention to? You just can't. On first down, Flutie. Couldn't get to Moore that time. Number 82 as Tom Europe moved into cover. He is a solid safety. Number 13, Tom Europe. And he gets the respect from the receivers throughout the league because he is known as a real hitter. He covers a lot of territory. And you're going to see right here. You freeze it here. Watch this. Hey, boom. Don't think Will Moore doesn't feel the hit coming. Hey, the arms get a little shorter right there. And Tommy Europe caused that incompletion all by himself. This is second and ten. Flutie lobs this one for Sapunjas. He almost made a miracle catch. Collier, number 23, Tony Collier, covering on Sapunjas, and it was almost a thing of beauty. Well, they're trying to work Dave Sapunjas slowly into the lineup. Here he is now. He tries to come underneath Tony Collier, but Collier stays with him step for step. This is a nice matchup to watch, and Sapunjas makes the catch, but watch the arm sneak in with Collier right there. Just enough to knock the ball loose. Sapunjas can't hang on. Hey, not surprising. He's been out for six weeks. Still a little rusty. Solid sequence for the BC defense there. They've had a solid season, yeah, period. Really I mean, have. This, is a, this is a solid defense. I mean, that was the suspect area coming into this season, but they have been uh, a super group. Martina just got it away. Here's McClennan on the return out near the 25-yard line. Well, storyline of the first half so far, brought to you by Chrysler Canada, is really a story of this guy, number 14, Danny McManus. And his outstanding receiver, Mike Trevathan, who has 110 yards and a couple of touchdowns receiving so far tonight. McManus, 164 passing yards. He's winning the duel with Doug Flutie so far. Yeah, Danny McManus has had a solid first half, and you know, he's such a terrific guy personally. 
you know, his teammates uh, always love to play hard for him and uh, hope that he has a good night. 2.19 to halftime with the Lions in front by three. This is Corey Philpotts. And the ball might have squirted loose, and it has. The Stampeders appear to have recovered as Philpott coughed it up. Kenton Leonard's at the bottom of the pile. Turnover each way now as the Stampeders claim theirs. Well, the BC Lions took advantage of their turnover for seven points. Now the Calgary Stampeders get a terrific opportunity deep in BC territory to capitalize on a BC Lion mistake. And Corey Philpott puts it on the ground here. The hit comes, I believe, from 99. Kenny Walker, the ball stripped loose. And I'm not sure really in that whole scrum there who makes the recovery. One thing I do know, Doug Flutie's got a great opportunity to take the lead in this game. This place got quiet all of a sudden. First and 10, Stampeders at the BC 30. Flutie looking for Pitts. And he was off the mark. Pitts turned around and was about four yards away from the toss from Doug Flutie. Well, the BC Lions have had some pretty consistent pressure on Doug Flutie tonight, and that has been the direct reason why he has not completed more balls. This one, he couldn't wait for Pitts to get open in the corner. He had let the, the ball go. Andrew Stewart was coming in. Now, BC Lions only have 28 sacks, but I think that's a little misleading. They get a lot more pressure than that statistic would indicate. Flutie good on 11 of 22 for 139 yards so far. He's looking at second and 10 now and dumped it across for Danielson. Danielson comes close to a first down. In fact, he should have it. They're spotting the ball near the 20 yard line. He'll be awfully close. Vince Danielson has at least nine and we'll see where they spot the ball. 2-0-2 to halftime. It is the Lions leading by three at 17-14. And a request for a measurement by Jake Ireland. Now we, we, sorry, we've talked about pressure tonight, and although the BC Lions, I don't think, have a sack yet to their credit. Uh, I mean, they have one sack, but you know what? The pressure here. I mean, Flutie has to get rid of it a little before he is ready. This is the second time this has happened. That's Virgil Robertson, 96, coming out. To Flutie's credit, he completes the pass, but he is being hurried much more tonight than I can remember this year. They've had a little heat on Flutie. Forced him to throw early a couple of times. Actually got to him once. Only the 20th time this season that Flutie has been sacked. Now Flutie faces third and inches. And he dives under. See where they spot the ball. He didn't make it by a whole bunch. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. I get hungry every time you do that <laughs> one. You know that? Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe a little Subway sub at halftime. I'm not so sure that Flutie made it this time. Place is alive. A little quiet there after the turnover, but the Lions get it back as the Lions force a turnover coming the other way. Two turnovers by Calgary, one on downs. It's tough to disagree with things that Calgary does, but this is one that I truly do disagree with. You've got Sean Daniels, who's 5'11, 235. And, and you need inches. Yeah, and consistently Flutie wants to take the quarterback sneaks. I think, you know, they, they've got to use the running backs in that situation a little more. And they've gambled a couple of times without a running back in the backfield tonight. Just Flutie back there. Oh! Clark was in behind the cover, and McManus overthrew him by about six inches. You know, it's funny. The BC Lions offensively aren't really throwing any new formations out at the Calgary Stampeders, but the Stampeders have made more mistakes in their secondary than I've seen them make this year. And Matt Clark, once again, he was turned loose. Trevathan was turned loose for a touchdown. They see Gerald Vaughn and Thurman together. You know, sometimes you switch men and bump coverage, and they've made a couple of key mistakes tonight. Luckily, that one didn't cost them. A minute 39 till halftime with the Stampeders trailing 
17 14 Lions second and 10 back at the 20. McManus looks to the near side and Alexander couldn't turn to the ball. Douglas Kraft was covering. Fans thought there might have been a little contact down there. No marker, however. Well, the Stampeder defense does their job after the turnover. It's a quick 2 and 0 oh for the 2 and out, rather, for the BC Lion offense and for Dave Ritchie, not exactly what he wanted because the Stampeders are going to get the ball back in terrific field position. Marvin Coleman is back in the lineup tonight as a nickel defensive back for the Stampeders and also an extremely dangerous punt returner. He has one touchdown on a punt return this year. So does Pee Wee Smith, who's also back there waiting for this punt. Minute 34 to halftime. Lots of time for the Stampeders to get some points on the board as Pasaglia gets this one away. It's not deep. Bouncing near the 50 and a marker goes down on the return by Pee Wee Smith. John Foody is in on the tackle, and so is number 27, Donovan Wright. Pee Wee Smith does a smart job there, making sure that ball doesn't touch the ground. And it's a calculated risk because he knows he's going to get the no yards penalty, even if he coughs it up. Cardinal rule, don't let that punt bounce. No yards, BC, 15-yard penalty, first down. And a 15-yarder marched off against the Lions. 27 yard punt and the penalty in and it's a net 12 for the Lions setting the Stampeders up at the 31 yard line. Anguish on the luck on the face of now penalties. He's seen penalties kill his team before so they lead the league in that department a very dubious one to lead it. Bloody has a first and 10 and he has Pee Wee Smith. Smith got away from Jackson and fought for a first down. Boy, did you see the way Pee Wee Smith absorbed that hit from uh, Enos Jackson? Much like a shock absorber, he cradles the ball and watches Jackson delivers the blow there, but Pee Wee Smith loses some yardage, but then picks up some more. Looked like a solid hit by Jackson, although he should have wrapped his arms around him as well. Well, nice job by Pee Wee to just absorb that hit and keep those legs moving. 13-yard gain for the Stampeders, 103 at halftime. Calgary set up with a first and 10 at the BC 18. Flutie shotgun again, just got it away. And almost picked off in the end zone. Flutie was decked as he threw the ball. Moore, the intended receiver, and an opportunity for Barry Wilburn. Well, we talked to Doug Flutie. I haven't seen him pressured as much in the game this year as he has been tonight. Here comes 47 Tyrone Chapman, and just as the ball is released, look at that, three BC Lions right there. And, you know, Flutie's having to let those throws go a lot sooner than he would like to tonight, and consequently, he's not completing nearly as many passes. Second and 10, Stampeders at the BC 18 with 51 seconds till halftime. Four heat on Flutie. Got it away, well short of the first down. The Wiggins, he's surrounded. And the Lions bend a little, but they don't allow another first down. Well, you have to wonder after every play now, Doug Flutie's clutching that right thumb, and did he hit somebody's helmet when he released the football a few plays ago? Watch Snipes, 91. Vince Daniels is trying to take him on. That is a total mismatch. And had Snipes maybe taken a better angle on Flutie, he would have had the sack. But once again, tremendous pressure being exerted on Flutie tonight. He has been running for his life. Well, you see the right hand. It might have hit Snipes' helmet there. And Doug Flutie uh, keeps rubbing that right thumb of his. 37 seconds till halftime as McLaughlin is in. His first field goal try of the night. What a great year he's had. 36 of 42, hitting on 85%. And McLaughlin has the Calgary Stampeders back to even at 17-17 with 20 seconds till halftime. But a great first half. You know, just enough mistakes uh, for the teams to capitalize against each other. And pretty solid first half. But there's the hand we talked about. That let the right thumb uh, definitely is bothering Doug Flutie. Pat Clayton, the athletic therapist, is going to have a look at it, make sure it's okay. 
If you see the ice bag go on it, you know he's in trouble. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that he can pull his chin strap off. That tells me that uh, it's not bothering him that much. So with 20 seconds to go until halftime, it's all even at 17. Stay with us at the half as we celebrate with the BC Lions and their great kicker, Lou Pusaglia. Solid first half for Danny McManus, who's been good for 164 yards passing on 50% of his passes. Doug Flutie on 14 of 26 for 157. McManus is tossed a couple of touchdowns. Stampeders have called a timeout. Now, John, you know, we talked about Flutie's thumb. Uh, I think he hit it on Snipes' helmet when he released the football at one time. There's Kent Austin beside Dave Ritchie. Uh, taking extensive treatments to get himself ready for the playoff game next week. Julio Caravata, number two, beside Austin, is the number two quarterback right now. Now to the final 16 seconds of the opening half as McManus is content to run up the clock. And here, again, a look at what might have happened to Flutie. Keeping him in. Well, you see that left hand of Snipes made contact with the thumb and might have jammed it right there. Gord, you got an update? Exactly what happened, Leaf. He says he's fine, just checking on the sidelines to make sure he can squeeze the ball, but he says no problem. And he's warming up. <laughs> Boy, you know, everybody in Calgary takes that big sigh of relief, now and they hear that Flutie's okay. Pretty good half of football. Indeed it was, all even at 17. It's halftime at the stadium at BC Place. We'll be back with the halftime show, including Lou Pusaglia, right after this. And ready now for the second half kickoff at the stadium at BC Place, coming down to Spencer McLennan to return for the BC Lions. McLennan gets one block, looks for room to the far side. And a great return as he gets out near midfield. Thirty-five yard return to give the Lions excellent field position for Danny McManus to work with. Here's how the quarterbacks fared in the first half. Flutie 14 of 26 for 157. Danny McManus good on 7 of 14 for a couple of touchdowns and 164 yards. Yeah, pretty solid first half by both and what I like are no errors, no interception by either quarterback. BC Lions right at the 54 and a half yard line. Good play action fake by McManus. Flutie makes the catch and Darren Flutie is dragged down after gaining a first down near the 40 yard line. 15 yards for Darren Flutie. Solid night for him as well as Mike Trevathan. Boy, he's made such a lovely transition from wide receiver into slot back. And uh, in our conversation yesterday, he said that is the reason why I've caught so many passes. It's just a little easier, he thinks, to uh, get open from that slot back spot. I think Alan Pitts would agree with that, too. Even at 17, first down toss. And a little mix up between quarterback and receiver there. Flutie looking for a call on the coverage by Kenton Leonard. Well, Ken Leonard's been as physical as I've seen him all season long. And, you know, there's two slots for BC are taking running starts to get to the line of scrimmage. And Wally Buono has told Ken Leonard on the sidelines, you've got to come up and challenge these guys. And, you know, Ken Leonard, uh, he has a right to his position on the field. And Flutie ran right into him. Uh, and, and good no call on that play. I'd agree with you, but uh, Flutie was <laughs> trying his best to maybe get the official to have another look at this coverage. Second and ten. And this is Phil Pot stopped well short of a first down. Grabbed by Will Johnson and Shreko Zizakovic. Lupus Sangli into the game, good on one of one so far tonight. Seventeen all. And the second half just nicely underway in Vancouver. Darren Flutie will spot. 
about it at about the 44. going on a night that they honor him for all his great years as a BC Lion and boy nothing smoother than this kick right here head down nice follow through I'll tell you what Darren Flutie does a nice job holding blue I watched them work in the warm up and Flutie gets the ball on the tee in the same spot the same angle every time just the way Lou likes it well you talk to any kicker and they'll say hey I'm only as good as the snap and the hold that I get from my holder. Stampeders first and ten at the 35. Flutie to his right and throwing on the run. He underthrew that. Dave Chaters supplying a little bit of pressure, and Alan Pitts has not been a very productive receiver for the Stampeders so far tonight. One catch for 15 yards. He has 20 touchdowns on the season and would like to break that record by getting a touchdown tonight for receiving touchdowns in the season. He is also trying to eclipse a mark set by Terry Greer in 1983 for total yards. And Pitts makes the catch this time. He's up near the 45. Still a little short of the Greer mark. Here's good luck Enos Jackson giving him lots of room to the outside there and uh, Jackson's really mixed it up on the times that he's wanted to challenge Pitts tonight and the times that he's backed off and Doug Flutie and Pitts read it perfectly. The out was there was open an easy pitch and catch for the Stampeders. Needs 20 yards. yards 20 yards to establish that record now. Sacramento over Baltimore, 18 to nothing at Hornet Field. Third and less than a yard to go. And let's see if the Stampeders made it this time. Flutie failed on a quarterback sneak in the first half and turned it over. Over well, the Sacramento Gold Miners, heck, you know, you look back to that game they lost in Edmonton. Now they beat Baltimore. Uh, what might have been had they allowed that catch by Marcus Dowdell? They might have been uh, gaining a playoff first with that win tonight. So that'll give the Blue Bombers. Oh, they got a great an shot. Opportunity at uh, top spot in the East as a result. Batted down. A big man on that one by Virgil Robertson, number 96. He towered over Flutie. That's a heck of a play by Virgil Robertson, 96. You know, th this play is set up nicely. The play action, and all of a sudden, when Flutie gets to the outside, he has the back wide open. But Virgil Robertson gets the hands up, and he can't get it into Sean Daniels. That's a heck of a play. If I remember the first game of the season we did, Winnipeg at BC. Robertson seemed to turn that whole game around. Had a fumble recovery for a touchdown, and he has been a rookie that has really performed nicely for this BC Lion defense. Second and 10, Stampeders, Flutie's shotgun. Just got it away for Tony Stewart. He stopped short of the first down. Henry Newby made the tackle after a five-yard gain. Newby has been outstanding all season long for the BC Lions. The outstanding Lion rookie in 1994. Well, you watch Henry Newby right in the middle. Watch how far he goes to make the play here. I mean, this is a linebacker with some pretty serious range. Goes out of your picture now. Whoops. He backtracks, comes all the way back across the field, and as Stewart makes the catch, he's right there with the hit. That's a heck of a defensive play. And, you know, this linebacking core of the Lions was suspect at the beginning of the year, but young guys like Chapman Newby and Virgil Robertson have really hung tough throughout a long season. Martino is in for the Stampeders across the 45, is partially blocked. Flags everywhere. Roberto Washington, Ricardo Washington rather, got through to get a hand on that, number 45. Oh, 
No yards. Calgary number 44. Five yard penalty on the bounce. First down. Ricardo Washington celebrates, and here's why. That'll stunt up front, and Ricardo Washington comes totally free and picks the spot out in front of Martino and gets just enough of that to get the block. And another break for the BC Lions. Another turnover. So the Lions will have super field position. Thanks to Ricardo Washington, number 45, BC leading it 20 to 17. When you're subjecting these men to a blind comparison of their cotton pants. Ooh, very soft. Thanks. Man A is in Dockers. Nice pleats. Smooth seams. And Man B is in our Canadian-made Denver Hayes cotton pants. Great fit. Flat pocket. Can she tell the difference? $39.95 Denver Hayes cotton pants. In reality, mm. the difference is the price. I thought he had more money in his pocket. Denver Hayes, only at Marksworth Warehouse. Back here on the sidelines with Ken Austin, who uh, a little bit ding, but should be back next week. Not going to take a chance this week. Was that the idea? Well, I mean, I'm still a little ways away, and we, we were going for the playoffs anyway. And I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be back. The first game, uh, we, we we thought the second game was the Grey Cup, and now it looks like I'll be back the first game. Tell us about uh, what you think of what Danny McManus is doing tonight. Well, I think Danny's doing real well. He's running the offense well. He's got a good command of it, using play action, and uh, we're, we're moving the ball well. Now the rumors are rampant throughout the league that you're going to come back next week. Can you confirm or deny? Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Right now, it's Danny Manis. McManus at the controls for the BC Lions, and this is Corey Philpott looking to get some room outside. He struck out, but it took three Stampeders to bring him down. Philpott bounced off a couple. He only picks up three yards. Marker down. Philpon averaging 7.4 yards a carry. You know, John, you look at Corey Philpon. He's had a tremendous year, over 14 yards rushing, but uh, seven 100-yard games, but they've all been against teams with less than 500-yard records. I think that uh, is a pretty serious statistic. No penalty on the previous play, so this is a first down for the Lions here as Clark dove out to grab that one from Danny McManus. Nifty little 10 yard pattern for Matt Clark. And the Lions move the art sticks again. You know, Matt Clark held out at the beginning of the year, wanted more money, and missed the first few games of the season. And they are very lucky that they were able to come to terms with him because, you know, Mervyn Fernandez didn't work out. Yo Murphy didn't work out. And they have really valued uh, the addition of Matt Clark back into this lineup. Lions first and 10 at the 49. John Millington, number 25, bowls his way for about five yards. 9.02 to go, third quarter with the Lions on top of the Stampeders, 2017. Well, I don't think there's any fullback in the league that runs tougher than Sean Millington when he gets that quick hitter into the line. 6'3, 235 pounds. One of the reasons why he has 11 touchdowns in those short yardage goal line situations. Second and five. McManus puts it up. And it'll be a first down for the Lions. Ray Alexander brought it down. First catch for him. Kind of the forgotten man tonight has been Ray Alexander, but uh, Danny McManus calls his number, and not surprising that Alexander catches one over the middle. A territory that he's pretty comfortable in. McManus having a tremendous night. 197 yards. And well, what you always love to see is those touchdowns and zeros on the interception totals. Nine yards picked up on the previous play. Lions set up at the 35. McManus play action on target again. Another big BC first down. Trevathan, number 77. 
Oh, that's a great look at an offensive line doing a job to pick up a blitz. And, you know, here's Trevathan. He will go down on the hook, but watch here. The blitz is coming. They pick it up. McManus has all kinds of time to throw. See how they sneak outside? That's 53. Kronopoulos, Kronopoulos to get the block. Trevathan is open. That is super offense. Fourth catch for 129 yards for Mike Trevathan. Loose ball in there. And it's hard to figure out who's come up with the fumbled football. Millington is at the bottom of the pile. I think you see Danny McManus saying, hey, that's my fault. That, that was pass play all the way. I don't know what happened uh, when he coughed it up. So it'll be second and 17 as a result of this miscue. Well, you see it hits Millington's helmet. It is he going on the play action fake, actually. And uh, <laughs> PC Lions were lucky that they were able to recover. Back to the 23 for second and 17 BC. Lions leading by three. McManus out of the cover. Trevathan makes the catch. But he's short of the first down, obviously. Gain is five yards, but there's a marker down. Well, Marvin Pope got into a bit of a battle uh, with one of the BC Lions, and that late flag, I think, is going to go for objectionable conduct against the Stampeders. Very uncharacteristic of that team. They don't usually beat themselves with silly penalties, but in this case, I think they're going to give the BC Lions an automatic first down. Lions have frustrated Major the Stampeders foul. tonight. On the Terry Ruffman, Calgary number 99. Not sure if he said 99 Kenny Walker or 91 Marvin Pope. I think he might have said Walker 99. There we go. We got them both for him. I believe 99. So the Lion drive continues as a result with 6:10 to go, third quarter. First and goal to go for the Lions at the Stampeder 9. Millington has a couple. Things are getting a little nasty yeah, they down are. there. Well, you know, there's a lot at stake here. These two teams may meet in the in the Western final quite possibly, and you know, nobody wants to back down an inch right here. There's the Whole gang meeting Sean Millington in the hole. And only a gain of a yard. So it'll be second and goal to go from the eight. McManus has done a super job at the controls for BC. Looks to the end zone. Trevathan can't make the catch. Kent Leonard won that battle, number 30. We were talking about him playing a little more aggressively, and I think aggression won it for him there. Yeah, he really did. You know, when you get down near your goal line, you really have to challenge those receivers, and you have to love the way Kenton Leonard's playing this game tonight. Gets the hand in there, and then watch the reaction to the ball in the air. Trevathan looks like he's got a touchdown, but Kenton Leonard was able to get in there and strip that ball loose. But, boy, truly, uh, you know, he's lost a couple of battles tonight, but he's won more than he's lost, and you have to love that aggressiveness from a defensive back. Lou Pasaglia gets the call once more. He's been good on two of two so far tonight. Make it three of three. Short one that time as Pasaglia adds to the BC lead. Lou Pasaglia, three field goals on the night, and the Lions have a six-point lead. 17 and two Lou Pasaglia field goals have the Lions in front, 23-17. John, I think you have to admire the way the BC Lions have been so tough on defense. You know, granted, there's a lot at stake for them tonight and really nothing for the Calgary Stampeders, but nevertheless, defensively, to have held the Stampeders to 17 points at this uh, stage of the game, I think Dave Ritchie and Gene Gaines, you see to his left, would be thrilled with the way their defense has played so far. Lions definitely have something to prove after being bombed by the Stampeders back in July. 
Well, you know, th this is a defense that, you know, people thought was suspect, and, and, and myself included at the beginning of the year, but coming into the last week of the season, they're ranked number two, only behind the Stampeders defense, and I think that's a remarkable improvement uh, from a year ago. Lunian first down, fired behind Tony Stewart. Number 47, Tyrone Chapman was there. Looney a little frustrated. Following tonight's game, the TSN Turning Points will be brought to you by Sony. A little frustration. In the Stampeder offense. Looney has had more pressure than he usually gets. Sea Lion defense has turned in a solid show. Flutie directing his receivers back there. Shotgun again. And Flutie running for his life. Down the sidelines and behind. But there's a penalty marker. The pass was intended for Will Moore. Check out the infraction with referee Jake Ireland. Illegal contact on an eligible receiver. DC number three, first down. That's Barry Wilburn. Oh, once again, the BC Lion defense has had some tremendous pressure on Flutie. I mean, the sack totals uh, don't really show this whole story tonight. Henry Newby, 94, he gets in. There he is right there. I mean, he beats the block of Tony Stewart, and once again, Doug Flutie is on the run. And this has not happened to him too too often this year. Now you see Tommy Europe coming on the blitz, but oh boy, you have to like the, the defensive aggressiveness of the BC Lions tonight. That was not the infraction there, as pointed out by Jake Ireland. Now Enos Jackson was shaken up and heads to the sidelines, so Tony Collier will come in in a full-time role, and maybe Sean Foody as well if they're going to a, a Six defensive back. Uh, this is tough for them because when the Calgary Stampeders go to their five pack as they're in right now, they don't have a, an extra defensive back in there. First and ten, Flutie. As Sapunja short of the first down, almost at midfield. Gord. Ennis Jackson injured his thumb a couple of series ago, severely dislocated his left thumb and just re-injured it. The problem is. He can't make a fist to chuck anybody at the line of scrimmage. He can't close his hand when somebody bears in on him and try to do it with the open hand hurts too much. So like you say, Leaf, they're without their nickel back when Calgary goes to the five pack. Second and one for the Stampeders. Trying to get across midfield. Flutie pitches for Stewart. He's got room to the near side and cuts it back. And up for the first down as he stopped about the 51. Five yards for Tony Stewart. You know what you have to like about Tony Stewart this year? You know, there was some question uh, when they began the season. He had a fumble problem a year ago, and that was the biggest problem he would have to overcome. And I mean, it's a nice game. He's only put the ball on the ground seven times in over 200 carries. So I think that the Stampeder coaching staff is just thrilled with the way he has handled himself. Wiggins to the far side. Pee Wee Smith flanked to the near side of the field on first down. Bloody is down. Stewart got through and so did Angelo Snipes. I think Snipes will get credit for the sack. He had nine coming into tonight's and has two on the evening. Flutie has not faced this kind of a barrage in some time. Well, they have really been coming with a tremendous amount of tenacity tonight. The BC Lion front group, they've been mixing up their blitzes nicely, and Bruce Coverton does not get beaten too often, but that time Snipes took the inside route and was raided Flutie's face. No chance to attempt to pass. Loss is eight, second and 18. There's early movement. Newby is claiming it was Coverton drawing him offside, or rather Snipes, I should say. Second and 18, and the discussion continues. Lions leading by six at 23-17. Final date on the 1994 regular season for both teams. Offside, 
DT number 91, still second down. Could have been worse for the Lions. That was uh, second and 18, and now it's still second down and a bit. Diagonal no, Snipes is pretty upset there. Bruce Comerton, no question, he moved a little early and I think drew Snipes offside, but the officials determined that uh, Snipes moved first. Second and 13 at the 54. Flutie has time this time and has his receiver. Alan Pitts. Check that. Danielson, number 88. Actually, Pee Wee Smith making a 17-yard reception there. Minute 25 to go, third quarter. Looney on first down, and there's Alan Pitts. He's inside the 25. Well, one of the reasons why Alan Pitts has had such a terrific year, watch how he reads the zone coverage and just finds the open spot. And he and Doug Flutie have had this chemistry all season long. Okay, he clears the linebacker. That's his key to just sit down right in that hole. Doug Flutie has the ball in the air just as he makes his break. That is tough to defense when you play zone. I think BC is going to have a much better chance if they just play that tight man-to-man. -man. 14 more for Alan Pitts total. He is six shy of the all-time CFL record. Looney buying some time. And had nowhere to go this time. He gets nailed. I think that was the right call that time. Intentional grounding. Calgary number 20. Second down. That was about 15 yards. Out of bounds. John, you know, I've always had a problem with that call. I think, you know, you've got a, a league that depends so much on its quarterbacks and you know how you protect them from late hits and all that kind of stuff. I think sometimes they should get the benefit of the doubt when they want to release that football and, you know, just take a, a bad play and not make it worse. But I don't know. To me, there's a real fine line in there where they should cut the quarterback some slack every once in a while. It is second and 17. Woody tries to get something going here. He has time, he has pits on a one hopper. Give the Lions credit, they have frustrated this great combination of Alan Pitts and Doug Flutie time and again tonight. Yeah, you know, that's a pretty good move by Pitts back to the quarter. He spins Tony Collier all the way around. The only problem was Flutie once again wasn't able to step up into the pocket and really deliver a strike to Pitts the way he normally does. The blitz was coming, Sean Foody on a halfback blitz, Tyrone Chapman was coming, and all night long, Foody has not been able to step up on that front foot and deliver the ball with the velocity that he normally does. Mark McLaughlin with a field goal try, and he misses. That doesn't happen either. Mark McLaughlin good on 85% of his field goals. In 1994, looking for another 200-point season, but he comes up a little wide on that one. And the Lions continue to lead. It is 23 to 18. This is CFL Live. One quarter to go at the stadium at BC Place with the Lions hanging on to a 23-18 lead on the Calgary Stampeders. Solid night for Danny McManus and company. And a frustrating time at times for the Calgary Stampeders and Doug Flutie. The Stampeders lead in first downs and it's close in yards passing and in net yards. Time of possession also favors the Stampeders, but the Lions have done something to frustrate the Calgary Stampeders at BC Place. Danny McManus, solid game for the Lions. I think, John, the one thing that's surprising out of those numbers to me is the fact that neither team has been able to get any more rushing yards than they, they normally do. McManus, a good night through the air. 221 and a couple of touchdowns to Mike Trevathan. 
far side and that one was low. He one hop that one for Matt Clark number 85. Dave Ritchie in his second year as head coach of the Lions with a very impressive record. 21 wins 13 losses and the one tie. It'll be second and 10 B.C. Trevathan the intended receiver. And Marvin Pope was roaming back. From his middle linebacking spot he was right with Trevathan. So two and outs for the Lions. Now one thing Gerald Vaughn knows is he's in his coverage here. He's going to have help from the inside. See Marvin Pope, the middle linebacker, he was working that way. And you know, for defensive back to understand the situation of his defense and where he's going to help, get help is so paramount. And Vaughn knew he was going to get help in the middle and no way that McManus was going to be able to complete that pass. Lou Pasaglia in and standing at his 20-yard line. He fakes it and hits Trevathan on the far side. But they're short of the first down. My, oh, my, what a what risky gamble at this stage of the game with a five-point lead deep in your own territory and your defense playing so well. You, you really leave yourself open to some serious second-guessing there when you don't uh, complete the play like that. You'll see Pasagli take a look. And, you know, obviously from the films, they felt that they were able to complete this one. They do complete the pass to Trevathan, but didn't fool Greg Knox for one minute. But Saglia pulled it off in the Grey Cup in 1985 for a key first down for the BC Lions and remembers that as one of the highlights of his career, completing a pass and keeping a drive going. But that drive stalled, and now Flutie has it back. He's on target for Alan Pitts, and that's the record. He has more than six yards and the necessary yardage to become the all-time CFL single-season yards leader, beating out Terry Greer, who set the record with the Argonauts in 1983. Well, it seems to be the icing on a cake for a terrific season by Alan Pitts, and this is the catch that puts him in the record books ahead of Terry Greer. More yards receiving in a single season than any other. And a first down to boot, now Flutie. On first and ten, throwing on the run near side, and out of bounds, Pee Wee Smith made the catch, but he was Obi. Barry Wilburn was covering. 2,009 yards for Alan Pitts in 1994. Terry Greer had 2,003 and a record that stood from 1983. Still one touchdown shy of shattering the receiving record of 20 touchdowns in a season. Flutie gets a chance at Pitts here, and he makes the catch. He's got the record there. Back to back for Alan Pitts. 21st touchdown of the season. A new CFL record in receiving a 28-yard strike from Doug Flutie to Alan Pitts. They've done it a time or two, haven't they? Well, there you see it, Alan Pitts. Uh... Gosh, on one series, gets a couple of records in the CFL record book, yardage, touchdowns, and my oh my, the list is just endless for his accomplishments. Here you see him on Tony Collier, on the middle safety, Sean Flutie had vacated that area. This is your chance for a home run, and Doug Flutie reads it perfectly. Pitts gets the inside position and will not be denied for this record. Two records on the same drive for Alan Pitts. Going for a two-point convert here. Batted away by Tom Europe. Sapungis was the intended receiver. So the Stampeders have the lead, but only by a point as a result of the missed two-point try. Alan Pitts, 21 touchdowns in this CFL season. That is a CFL record. And this is CFL Live. 37 yards and 21 touchdowns. Yeah, let's go back to that record-breaking touchdown. Here's Sean Flutie, the middle safety, and what Doug Flutie is looking at is, hey, if the safety is up here, I got a lot of territory to hit the home run to my guy. And watch Flutie. He looks uh, Sean Flutie off. Hey, Flutie's out of the picture now. Here's your chance for the home run. 
My oh my, Pitts makes a beautiful catch, sets a record. Spencer McLennan on the return for the Lions. He's been solid tonight. And he's out across the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Spencer McLennan stopped by Junior Thurman. Stampeders took the lead with a scoring drive. Three plays to cover 39 yards after the Lions gambled. Alan Pitts, a 28-yard reception from Doug Flutie, his 21st touchdown of the season. And that's receiving, folks, is the CFL record. A lot of people surprised by the Lions' decision to fake that punt. No one more so than Calgary. What a change of emotion on the Stampeder bench after that fake. We well, talk about turning points. My goodness. Phil Pot stopped in his tracks. Marvin Pope was there, 91. So is Zizekovic, and there is no gain on the play. Stampeders appear to have taken the momentum right away from the VC Lions. Six defensive back into the secondary for Calgary. McManus staring at second and ten. Play action. McManus looking for Clark, and he's picked up. First interception of the ball game. As it's grabbed by Douglas Kraft, number three. about pleasant surprises for the Calgary Stampeders this year and Douglas Kraft has to be at the top of the list with Greg Knox that is his seventh interception and the first one that Danny McManus has thrown tonight but it couldn't come at a worse time as the momentum of this game has totally shifted with that failed third down gamble on the pond and now the interception by Douglas Kraft you know this guy is one of the underrated corners in the league he's had 13 knockdowns now his seventh interception on a ball that was very poorly thrown and the Stampeders have a chance to really take control of this game in the fourth quarter. Calgary leading by a point with 11.23 to play. Woody faked a shovel pass ahead, look for Pitts and turn around is fair play. Picked out by Barry Wilburn, number three for the Lions. And a penalty marker comes down indicating there might be some rough stuff over there by the Stampeders. Barry almost hurt himself. <laughs> oh. My gosh. Be careful how you spike the ball. <laughs> well, you know, so many times throughout the season, Doug Flutie's receivers have come back and uh, made great plays to catch balls for him, but this truly was a ball that should not have been thrown. And with the pressure coming, he lets it fly anyway. And Barry Wilburn, who's replacing Les Brown tonight, comes up with a key interception. Wilburn on the return. The penalty is going against the Lions, folks. We'll sort it all out when we return. Well, the BC Lions get the key interception with Barry Wilburn, but they lose a little bit of yardage. Here's Doug Flutie trying to make the tackle. Now watch, 74, Dave Chaters. Hey, he picked out the quarterback and drilled him right in the back. There's your illegal block right there. Nevertheless, the BC Lions do have a key turnover. They trail by one. They got the ball back. Almost back-to-back -back interceptions. Flutie coughed up his first of the game. Just after Danny McManus coughed up his first of the game. So with 11.06 to go, it's a one-point game. The BC Lions are down by one. With a first and 10 at the 43. Trevathan. What a great run after making the catch. Trevathan just stuck his hands up there, dragged it down, and cut up field. And that's a solid read by Danny McManus with his slot back, Mike Trevathan. As soon as he clears the linebacker, Johnson, boom, the ball's in the air right now. He splits the linebackers, Pope and Johnson, but that's a terrific read by the slot back and a terrific read by McManus, too. 16 yards for Trevathan. Solid night. First and ten for the Lions, and this is Corey Philpott. Philpott has better than five. Six for Philpott, and this guy has been the star of the show, has he not? A couple of touchdowns and 154 yards and catches. Got to love that production from Mike Gervaithan. And that puts him over 1,000 for the season. He came into the game with 915 yards receiving. 
missed three games. Second and four. Millington gets the call and he'll have the first down. Marker down. Stopped by Greg Prayers. Well, guys, after a season, we finally found a name for Baltimore. They have the banners up here in the end seats, and a smart aleck here put up a little banner here that says Rough Riders. No, <laughs> it couldn't be, could it? Two, I don't know, but three, definitely no. No, I don't think so. Well, I like the spelling, though. It's imaginative. Baltimore having a tough night in Sacramento and losing, giving... Winnipeg a chance to finish in top spot on the CFL East as a result. Here's McManus. Hit as he throws from eighth of the target. It was second and 14. <laughs> Stu Laird was in on top of the Lion quarterback along with number 51, Alondra Johnson. Johnson coming on the blitz, and this is what has really changed in the philosophy of the Calgary defense. You know, second and long a year ago, second and 15, they would have played a real tight zone coverage, but now they've changed up. They're giving teams Ooh. different looks. They come with the blitz, and boy, did McManus get that dude by A.J. Johnson. But th that's what's so tough about Calgary now. You really don't know how to prepare for them. They really give you so many different things to think about. Stan Peters on top by a point at 24-23 as Luke Saglia lifts this. To Coleman looking for room near side. He's got the speed. Coleman turns it into a pretty decent return out near the 35. We've got a timeout at the stadium at BC Place. John Foody leading the BC tacklers there. Nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And it's a one point game. What a wonderful year for Alan Pitts. He broke his own reception record with 126, previous mark 118. He broke Terry Greer's yardage mark. Now at 237, and D.K. Smith, along with John Volpe, had the old touchdown record at uh, 21, or at 20, and that's been broken by Alan Pitts, too. And he's on a team that he can't get dominated for MVP. And you can't get to be the MVP. <laughs> you wow. can't make the final. Just a question uh, from the Calgary sideline. I'm wondering why Doug Flutie would stay in the football game if uh, Pitts has the record already. He's already jammed his thumb once. Why take a chance with your star quarterback? But I guess the game's too important to Wally Boyle, and Flutie stays in late. It's important to Doug Flutie, too. He likes to play. He doesn't like to rest. Tony Stewart, hard running inside for number 21, Tony Stewart. The gain is five yards. Crowd of 40,556 on hand at BC Place tonight. Partly to see Flutie, but maybe mostly to see uh, Lou Pasaglia honored this evening for 19 years of service. And everyone has seen a pretty good ball game. One point separating the Stampeders and the Lions. This is second and five Calgary. Flutie looks to the far side. He'll have the first down. Will Moore made the catch in front of Charles Gordon. Now what the Stan Peters would love to do is just to grind off some time on the clock here. Nobody knows it better than Doug Flutie at 7.50 and counting. Little play fake influences the outside linebacker Snipes, and that opens up a nice passing lane for Doug Flutie downfield to find Will Moore. Game was 10, setting up a first and 10. Flutie shotgun. Pumped once, and that seemed to slip. He was pinned immediately. Virgil Robertson gets credit, I'm sure. I think you really have to give the BC Lions secondary credit. I mean, they have lost Enos Jackson. He is out of the ball game. That means Sean Flutie comes in at safety, and Tommy Europe has moved to the halfback spot. Now, you watch Flutie. He wants to go to Sapunjus right here, but Tom Europe came up, jammed him through the pattern, all out of whack, and now the pressure comes in. Boy, oh boy, Chaters is there. Robertson is there. This has been a stingy BC Lion defense tonight. Class of seven seconds. Making a loss of eight, second and 18. On 
into the cover and Clooney fired that one into the turf for Will Moore. And I honest, honestly believe all these throws that are going into the ground tonight are the result of pressure, pressure, and more pressure. Clooney is just not as comfortable as he normally is back in the pocket. The Lions only rushed four guys that time. Flutie had lots of time to step up, but yet he couldn't deliver a strike to Will Moore. The hits that Doug Flutie has taken tonight, I assure you, have taken their toll. 6.47 remaining fourth quarter. It's a one-point game with the Stampeders on top. Martino's kick. Not deep. McLennan draws a flag. Raymond Biggs, number 44, a little too close to the punt receiver that time. Four-yard return, 34-yard punts. They'll tack on a little bit for the BC Lions. You get the feeling, John, that in true storybook fashion, uh, Lou Pasaglia might have a chance to win this one for the BC Lions. I would think uh, there is an opportunity, but lots of time to go. 15 yards, Jesse. Down. Jake Ireland uh, did indeed confirm that it was Raymond Biggs in a little too tight. Give Spencer McLennan credit for fielding that punt before it hit the ground to induce that no yards penalty. McManus, pretty solid evening, wouldn't you say? I'd say so. He's done a very good job. Throwing the one interception, but he had a couple of touchdown passes early to Trevathan. And he has been steady all night long. First and ten for McManus and the Lions now. Out across the 50. McManus has plenty. He caught it twice, but did hang out. Bounced out of his mitts once, but Flutie held on. Nine yards for Darren Flutie. Good production on first down. Yeah, Calgary a lot of times will be in a zone defense on first down. This is a great way to attack it. Just bring your slot back across the field underneath Ooh. Marvin Pope and Johnson and Finley and get it to him quickly as McManus did. And Darren Flutie almost picks up a first down, but solid call on first down. Done a nice job tonight mixing up, uh, you know, of expecting the blitz to hit Trevathan quickly and now going underneath the linebacker coverage. Second and one. And Millington barges ahead. John Millington will have the first down for the Lions. Boy, what a difference in 1994, John, for running backs throughout the league. A year ago, not one single back had over a thousand yards, but this year, have a look. Five of them in the league, over 1,000 yards, and Mike Pringle with an opportunity tonight to go over 2,000 yards. I'm not sure whether he did it. I suspect losing 18 zip to Sacramento that he didn't. Might have uh, had a little bit of difficulty picking up the 99 to get to 2,000. Two 1,000 yard rushers in this one tonight. Stan Peters have the edge in that department, and on the scoreboard, but only by a point. McManus, near side, has Clark. Good catch. Solid catch to hang on. They'll call it a 10-yard game. Junior Thurman made the catch on Matt Clark. Looked very comfortable outside. Well, you know, you get into the late stages of the ball game. Now four minutes and 50 seconds remaining. You have to have your players making some key catches and key plays. And that was a much more difficult catch than it looked by Matt Clark to keep this drive going. 437 remaining. First and 10 Lions. Now at the Stampeder 37. Millington. He ran into Zizakovic for one. And Pope for another. Fifteen of twenty-eight, closing in on two hundred and sixty yards. The two touchdowns early and the one interception late, which, as it turned out, did not cost the BC Lions any points. Second and ten, McManus looked for Flutie, and he was well off target that time. Well, I've just been informed, uh, Wellesley, that Mike Pringle had 71 yards on the ground today, so he comes up a bit short of that elusive 2,000-yard mark for a season. Nevertheless, he is now in the record books uh, as of a week ago as the number one rusher in CFL history for a single season. That is pretty phenomenal. 
I think Wally Buono, who we saw, would even tip his hat to an opposing player with that feat that Mike Pringle accomplished. This is second and ten. Drop play for Millington, and he'll be a bit short, I do believe. Solid run. Looks like about nine yards. Now the Lions gambled on third and ten. And that really cost them the lead in the ball game on the fake by Lou Pusaglia when he completed the pass but came up short of the first down. Well, this is an interesting, interesting decision by Dave Ritchie earlier in the year in a game at Sacramento. He had a chance to kick a field goal for a win late in the game, but he chose to try and bury the gold miners by gambling on third down. Didn't get it and eventually ended up in a 15 all tie. But now another third down gamble and uh, I think he's saying hey I remember what happened the last time maybe Les Brown who's standing beside him had a little influence at coach let's take the sure three take three here and grab the lead back by a couple of points Lupa Saglia having a perfect night and as I said that perfection eluded him Coleman still on his feet and he has an escort. Lupa Saglia, one of the players over to slow him down, but Marvin Coleman almost found an opening to go all the way. So Pasaglia is wide on that field goal drive. Stampeders cling to the lead by a point with 2.48 to play in BC. That's well, funny, at the commercial break, Gord Miller was telling me that Wally Buono at first had told Coleman to give up the single point, but then quickly changed his mind, and what a pretty astute decision that was, is the missed field goal, and the St. Peters get it out to around the 50, but do you think Dave Ritchie has bad luck? Uh, or none at all. Whoa! Lupa Saglia misses for the first time tonight, a 33-yard field goal, and then Coleman returns at 64 yards, so instead of taking the lead in the ballgame, you're still down by a point. 2.39 to go, and the Stampeders have the ball back. Good field position for Calgary out of the 49. Flutie gets a chance for the win. Sapunjas makes the catch short of the first down. Seven yards for Dave Sapunjas. Wow, this may become the key second down play of the ball game. You know, the, the Calgary Stampeders are about one first down away from a legitimate Mark McLaughlin opportunity at a field goal. And that would force the BC Lions to score a touchdown if they get the ball back. So this is a crucial, crucial play. It is second and three. Stewart gets the call. And I think the Lions might have held him. Stewart. Coming up with a big play on second and three. Guys on the field tonight that'll need those after this pretty tense ball game. Third down, one to go. Pressure on the BC Lion defense. As the Stampeders go gambling with a one point lead and a minute 52 on the clock. Flutie trying to draw him offside, and he couldn't do it. Parker down. That's a pretty disciplined play by the BC Lions to make sure that they stay, were able to stay onside there. Doug Flutie with no intent of snapping the football, just trying to induce them to come across the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Flutie is the lone back in the backfield, and Stan Peters don't put anybody in there who might be able to run the ball with a little more beef. No harm done for Calgary because it'll be third and 11, and Martino is in. 141 to go. BC plays. Is alive. Here's a charge. Martino got it away, but it's a low kick. Spencer McLennan grabbed by the first Stampeder upfield. That's Biggs after a two yard return, 42 yard punt. You know, John, the BC Lions have had trouble with discipline all season long, but on that key third down play where 
Doug Flutie tried to lead them offside. Watch Angelo Snipes, the team leader on defense. He's saying that he realizes what's happening. Hey, they're just going to try and draw us offside. So watch what he does. He's just saying, hey, guys, don't move. Don't move. And they don't. And the Calgary Stampeders give up the penalty, forced to punt. And now the BC Line offense has a last chance with a minute and 33 to go. Decent opportunity to win here for Danny McManus. But he needs about four first downs. Good catch. Slanting in at the 35 and close to a first down. McManus on target. And Darren Flutie makes a nine yard gain. 129 remaining, a one point game with Calgary on top, 24 23. Been a terrific game, hasn't it? it Just enough errors to make it exciting? Yeah, right. Should be enough for a first down in spite of the fact that Millington is tossed back. We'll see where they spot it, however. I think uh, Sean Millington got a very favorable spot there. It looked as though he was met right in the hole and didn't was not able to push that Calgary defense back very far. But be an interesting. Uh, obviously, they'll have to gamble at this stage. Minute 14 to go, but he got drilled. Tonight's game brought to you in parts by GMC Truck, the strength of experience. And it's been a good one, folks, from the stadium at BC Place. Just about a block from the new GM Place, which will be home to the Vancouver Canucks and the Vancouver Grizzlies in 1995. Well, not quite the favorable spot that the Lions needed. This is third down, less than a yard to go. And shot Millington. First throw. He got the three yards and a minute four on the clock. And he is a horse. Did you see the determination that he took that handoff with? He put his head down at 6'3", 230 pounds. Got the shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. I mean, that was a heck of a run. He was determined he would not be denied that first down. 58 seconds remaining. The Lions are down by a point. McManus for Clark. I don't know. Junior Thurman was covering. No penalty marker down. There was a little contact down there, but no mark. No flag. Well, the Calgary Stampeders now counter on second and ten with their nickel package. Number six, Greg Frears comes into the ball game, and usually when he enters, that means they're coming with some sort of blitz package. Clark to the near side, along with Darren Flutie. Stampeders lead it by a point. Second and ten for McManus. More heat, McManus. Got it away to Flutie over the middle. And does he get the first down? We'll see where they spot it. Second ever. Keeps the drive alive for the Lions. And John, you really have to appreciate the mobility of Danny McManus tonight. That's the second time on this drive that he has stepped to the outside to elude the blitz and the pass rush and found a receiver that time. Darren Flutie open. They pick up the first down and keep this drive going in the dying seconds of the ball game. Seventh reception for 71 yards for Flutie. Now 33 seconds to go. Trevathan. The intended receiver and it's picked off by Vaughn. And one seemed to sail away on Danny McManus and so did the victory for the BC Lions. Twenty nine seconds to go and the Stampeders will get the ball back. And it's unbelievable to think that Danny McManus and Mike Trevathan, who all evening long have had such terrific chemistry and awareness of where each other was going to be, that this pass would be simply overthrown, miscommunication, and Gerald Vaughn waiting right there with the easy interception and probably will determine and kill this outcome for Dave Ritchie and his club. Well, they'll look back to the gamble on third down from punt formation with Lupus Aglian. 
completed the pass but came up short of the first down on the gamble. Stampeders took over there and marched in for the touchdown. And that's the difference in the ball game. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. A uh, couple of things. Uh, the punt on third down. Lupus Aglia's inability to hit the field goal to give them the lead. Gordon. So the Calgary Stampeders appear to be on their way to a 15 victory season. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Only twice before in CFL history have teams won 15 or more games in a season. The 89 Edmonton Eskimos and the 1993 Calgary Stampeders. Not only did those two teams fail to win the Grey Cup, neither team even went to the Grey Cup game. They both lost the Western Finals at home. So here's Calgary again with 15 wins, but they still got to win two playoff games outdoors to get back here. They're not going to want to hear that in Calgary, Gord, as you make that announcement tonight. <laughs> There's already a little heat on this football team. I shouldn't say heat. There's a little bit of pressure to come back from last year's devastating loss to the Edmonton Eskimos in the Western Final. It's something that the Stampeders have been dreaming about for 50 weeks. They are a pretty focused football team, and their whole objective was to have a clean season as they have had and then to get back to the Grey Cup and especially here in Vancouver in these uh, terrific conditions to play in when they won their Grey Cup a few years ago of course it was in Toronto and they absolutely annihilated the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with a terrific display by Flutie and his receivers so they think if they can get back here their chances are pretty good under the dome. Final score will read 24 23 Calgary Stampeders over the BC Lions but when you look at the performance by the Lions here tonight, a moral victory nonetheless. I mean, they had an opportunity to win the game, but they stayed with the Calgary Stampeders. So if they do meet along the playoff trail, it's not going to be like the team that lost to the Calgary Stampeders by uh, 50 points in the regular season. They've oh. proven that they can stay with Calgary. Well, oh, I think you make a good, an excellent point, John. In fact, uh, I think if you walk down to the BC Lion dressing room after this game, they're going to say, hey, this was our game uh, and it was our game to win and we just didn't come up a buck short but I mean we had every chance to win this ball game tonight so for the Edmonton Eskimos they can breathe a little easier they don't have to win that game against Las Vegas tomorrow maybe that'll influence Ron Lancaster how he plays certain players in that game it means the BC Lions will be heading to Edmonton to play in the Western semifinal at Commonwealth against the Eskimos and of course Doug Flutie and the Stampeders will await the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the other half of the Western Division playoffs. Welcome. Welcome back. Time for the TSN Turning Point brought to you by Sony. John, there's no question the game turned around dramatically in the fourth quarter when the BC Lions chose to gamble on a third down punting situation. Lupus Aglia hits Mike Trevathan with the pass, but Greg Knox was there to make the tackle, stopping them well short of the first down. Three plays later, Alan Pitt scored. The Calgary Stampeders took the lead and never looked back. That was the old ball game. Cash donation will be made to the Canadian Coaching Association for the Training and Development of Amateur Athletes on behalf of TSN and Sony and the new V-Series Trinitron. Let's send you down to Gord Miller. Thanks very much, John, here with Doug Flutie. Doug, I kept forgetting that this game didn't mean anything to the Calgary Stampeders. Why all the urgency near the end? Why was the victory so important? It's important going into the playoffs to go in with a full head of steam. And uh, this was a good, tough, hard-fought win, I think, which really sets a tone for the playoffs. We were more fired up for this game than we've been in weeks. And everyone's saying it's a meaningless game, but to us, it's very important. You did get the records for Alan Pitts. How important was that for you? It was, it was important, but it was secondary. Um, in fact, I passed up on a couple opportunities to try to get the ball to Alan early, and I could have kicked myself afterwards because uh, if, if I just take my reads and deliver the ball, he'll get his yardage. Doug, thanks very much. Uh, good luck in the postseason. Thanks a lot. Keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> Doug Flutie of the Calgary Stampeders. His team gets the victory, and Doug Flutie star receiver Alan Pitts gets his records. The Stampeders hang on to win 24-23. Back with more in a moment on the CFL Live. 